Hello and welcome back to How to Build Software Without Coding. I'm Mr. Hackathon. I show you how to build software without coding. And today what we're going to do is to build an onboarding flow, a user onboarding flow for softer projects. So if I just show you softer, on my channel, I have a decent amount of videos about softer. It's to me, it's one of the best tools to use to build web applications. Most recently, I've shown how to integrate GPT-3 and AI with softer projects to create really interesting projects. What I want to show you today is how to manage user onboarding. What we want to do is to set up our backend database in Airtable. And we want two tables. One table, we want something that looks like this. So I have user ID, if I just show you the formula here. I have record ID, I have a name, email, avatar, magic link which are all kind of default ones, at least name, email, avatar, magic link is default with softer. Um, that's kind of like the minimum you might want. And then I have some others, onboarding, location, created time, last modified time. So again, created time and last modified time, you just as best practice, you want to put that in all your tables. We're going to talk a little bit about the on onboarding and location a little bit later. What I also have here is a table for onboarding and I have an onboarding ID. I have a location, which is just a drop down menu and users that this is mapped to. To help you understand a little bit more, when a user signs in by default with, with software, when a user signs in, they can only put their name and email, I, I think. And so what you want to do is to create this onboarding flow for them to enhance their profile. And what we what you do is set up your backend database like this, with this users uh, table that looks something similar to this, and an onboarding table that looks something similar to this. You can have more fields, you can have less fields, but the field you do have to have is this, users. And the way I set that up is I just click add field, link to another record and you just link it to users. And then what it does, it maps this onboarding. So it automatically adds onboarding or whatever your table's name is here. And this is a lookup field. So if I actually remove this, if I can, okay, I removed it. If I want to add a lookup field, I can add lookup field, location, add one field, and I enhance the user's profile here. This table is only used for user onboarding, and this table is used for the actual user profile. So what I've done is I've created a new software project, and what we're going to do now is create the front end. I've already had, I already made this, so I'm just kind of walking you through how it works and how, how to set this up. So I used a default template, one of the first things I did, I connected my base. So I went to users. It gives you an option if to connect your base. It should look something like this. You add your Airtable key. You select your base. You select your table, that you, the users table. Connect email, name, magic link, and avatar. Those are the ones by default. Then what we want to do is we want to have a page that the user views after they log in. We want to have a page the user views after they log in. For me, this is, I think this is the list page. So after the user logs in, it, it redirects them to this list page and there's two options. If the user has already been onboarded, they see this list here. If the user hasn't been onboarded, they see this at the top. And this is just done using visibility conditions. So I've added a block, I've added a call to action block. This is the block I've added. And then if I click on this, you change the visibility to logged in users and you have a custom user group. So here I have a custom user group called onboarding incomplete. On this one, I have a custom user group called onboarding complete. To create your custom user group, what you do is go to settings, go to user groups and permissions, go to user groups, and you're going to create a, add a user group. And what 
I have here, if I go to onboarding incomplete, I have onboarding incomplete, and I want to say the logged in users onboarding, logged in users onboarding is empty. So if a user created an account and this field is empty, then it's, they, they're going to be added to the user group onboarding incomplete. The opposite is for onboarding complete. If the logged in users onboarding is not empty, they're added to the onboarding complete. So this is where the visibility conditions and the custom user groups come in, because what we can see here, go to visibility, onboarding complete, they see this top one, the bottom one, they see, they see the bottom block if it says, if they're in the user group onboarding complete. The next thing we have to do is to go to our sign up form and make some adjustments to our sign up form. So we have our sign up form here. What we want to do with our sign up form, if I scroll down, we want to redirect the page to this list page. So basically after this sign up, what page do you want them to go to? And that for me, the page is called list. And I think that's it on this particular page. The last thing we want is to make an adjustment to, or add a new page. So I've added a new page called onboarding, and this is just a form. This is just a custom form. And obviously I just have location here. I've mapped it to the data source, mapped it to user onboarding. So you want to create a form that maps to user onboarding. The table is onboarding and the user onboarding is just the name of my base. Um, the table is onboarding. You want to map it to that table, but here is the key part. So I have my field, my location field. You can see location here, but I have this hidden field. You need this hidden field. This hidden field basically says what user it is. So if we go back, you can see I have this that says users. If I actually click here, it doesn't match to any user right now. I want to go to, if I jump back, go to logged in users, record ID, logged in users, record ID. And now when we update their profile, what it's going to do, it's going to automatically generate a onboarding ID. That's just an auto generated a key. I don't have one in the user table, but that's also generated key. It's going to add the location, but it's also going to add the logged in users record ID. And when I demonstrate this, you will understand the, the full purpose of this. You want to make sure that everything's connected. So you want to make sure here on your call to action that it's connected to your onboarding screen. When it goes to your onboarding screen, you want to make sure after you submitted, uh, I put update profile. You open a page and you open the list page or whatever page you want to redirect the user back to once they updated their profile. So to show you this in action, I'm just going to double check. I'm going to delete myself as a user. And I'm going to show you this in action. So it takes me to my homepage. I click sign up and I'm going to sign up. And now I sign up. And because my profile is incomplete, it shows this, this page here. If we actually go to my backend database, you can see it's created a user, but I don't, my onboarding is incomplete and I don't have a location. And you can see that confirmed here. So if we actually go to complete profile, it takes us to this onboarding page, which is just a form. I'm just going to select United Kingdom, click update profile. And let that load. And what we can see, that's updated the profile. If saved the user ID. You can see this is the same ID as it is here. 
But we go back to users, you can see onboarding is now not empty. You can see it's added the location, which is just a lookup field. And now it redirected us back to that list page. And now we can see our list. So this is how you create user onboarding for your software projects. Maybe you want to create a marketplace. Maybe you want to create something that matches groups of people together. This is how you create user onboarding to enhance the user's profile. If you have any questions, feel free to write in the comment section or reach out to social media with any questions or concerns whatsoever.